Dearly beloved, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I will come you to finding God. Finding God is, um, we come in episodes and they energize us to keep on our journey because we are people that are on a move, on a move day by day, day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. And so in our earthly life, in our earthly journey, we aim to find God because he's the one who purposed that you and I should be here. And so let us pray, giving thanks. Father God in heaven, we appreciate. And for the Lord, you bless us again. As you have always done, continue your work of mercy in our lives. Continue your work of favor in our lives. And may we continue learning more from you to do what you want us to do so that we enjoy your goodness in the land of the living. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, we continue. And the journey that we're moving is learning something one at a time. Learning something one at a moment. And so that we continue building on one after another. And so that at the end, we become a people that God will say, well, well done, my son. Well, well done, my daughter. And come on in because you are to inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you and for many. And so, friends, we continue considering and thinking about our biblical personalities, the men and women that the Bible keeps talking about. Some of them have written something down by themselves and therefore they bear Bible names there. Some others have done something, have said something, and there's something that has, somebody has re reported about what they have said. Someone has reported about what they did, and someone reported about what they acted. And if it is positive, you learn something positive about it. And so that actually you also try to align yourself in that direction. Supposing it is a negative thing that has been written about something, somebody, names that have done wrong things in the Bible, like the woman Jezebel. Yes, there's something that you learn from there. And then other names, name it, name it. Those that have done good, we learn to put up, align ourselves there. Those that have done bad, we learn something. And we live according to what God wants us to be. Now, the name that actually we follow up again is now a name of three letters. And this name of three letters is a prophet. They are not three, four. A name of four letters. Amos. A-M-O-S. Four letters. Amos. Is someone that we want to follow in the next episodes. Is, have you ever heard about the name Amos? Have you ever read this book? in the Old Testament of the prophet Amos. First and foremost, he's one of the writing prophets. His name appears as a book name. Secondly, he's one of the minor prophets. He's one of those works that are shorter in length, but they carry a message, the reason why that's been put in the word of the God, the word of God, the Bible. And so Amos, the prophet, of course, he lived with his contemporaries. But the message comes to a people that needed to heed, that needed to receive it and transform themselves and change themselves and do what God wanted them to do. Now, I've tried to search for the meaning of the name Amos because actually Hebrew names have their meaning just like you will do. But some people, some writers have attributed the name, the meaning, burden. And indeed, when you read about his works, his writings, they are burdensome. He had, he felt a burden for the people and how also God feels a burden for the people. And so he is talked about as a man that comes on the stage. I just want to read verses, a few verses in chapter one to set the, base, the basis for our discussion, of our interaction this moment. And the Bible says in chapter one, verse one, 
the words of Amos, who was among the shepherds of Tekoa, which he saw concerning Israel in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, two years before the earthquake. And he said, that's in verse 2, the Lord roars from Zion and utters his voice from Jerusalem. The pastures of the shepherds mourn and the top of the camels withers. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Damascus and for four I will not revoke the punishment because they have threshed Gilead with the threshing sledges of iron. So I will send fire upon the house of Hazael and it shall devour the strongholds of ben -Hadad. And read on, read on, read on and you'll see messages flowing. But I just desire to dwell on verse 1 and verse 2. But verse 1, the message for you, the message for me. This man, Amos, they have described him as one of the shepherds of Tekoa. Meaning, therefore, that he was a farmer. He worked in the fields looking after sheep and tending fig trees, looking after fruit trees, a farmer. He was from the south, and the south was the kingdom of Judah. This time around, there were two kingdoms. One was the south, Judah, which comprised of, the, of Benjamin and, and Judah, and this is the headquarters were at Jerusalem. And the rest of the tribes were in the north, and that is called Israel, the north. And so during his time, there was a period of good things happening. He prophesied at a time of stability. Farming was going on very well. Prosperity was the order of the day. So at the time of the message, the message is coming. There was prosperity. There was stability. There was, because of the good times that they were in, there was evident idolatry. And idolatry is about rampant worship of idols. The word idolatry comes from idols. Not adultery, but idolatry from the word idols. So they would worship the idols, remembering what the Lord had warned them when they were moving into, into Egypt, I mean to Israel, I mean to the promised land. He promised, he told them that when you have eaten and you are satisfied, don't forget the Lord. Do not depart from the Lord. Now here, because of the stability, because of the prosperity, they, were, they engaged themselves in some evils. And the evils were idolatry, the worship of idols, extravagance. You know, there's a tendency to be extravagant with what we have because we have a lot and we have enough. Now, because of the times that were prevailing, there were lots of corruption. Corruption, corruption, corruption. So as we talk about corruption in our times now, it has not started today. Human beings are human beings. And corruption alongside injustices. Injustices, the rich mistreating the poor. The poor lot suffering and struggling while the rich were getting richer and richer and better. As the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. Now, those were the times of Prophet Amos as well, that there was corruption, there was injustice. And therefore, you can't talk about corruption, you can't talk about injustice without oppression. And oppression meaning that actually the poor being oppressed, the workers being oppressed, those who are working and others, oppressed employees now that was that was something that was happening during the time of 
prophet Amos. It was apostasy and syncretism, neglecting God's word, being double-sided, one leg in the belief in the God who created the heaven and earth, another leg in the Baalism, worship of many other gods and worshiping of trees, poles, you know, stones, all those apostasy and syncretism. Syncretism, actually all these are the evils of deviating from what God wants, doing things our own way, worshiping things that are not to be worshipable as a believer in the one living God. And so this was the point. And then Amos' time, hypocrisy. And when he talks about the Lord roars, actually was roaring, the voice was coming sharp and bitter and bigger because of the evils that were happening at that time. So Amos came to warn the impending doom. The reason why he's called the prophet of doom. And we shall, in another time, we shall talk about Amos as the prophet of doom and why he became doom. Because remember his name as alluded earlier, Baden. Now, so when we read things like this, and since we're dealing with personalities, do we pick anything that help us? If there's anything that is mentioned that is read in the Bible, can we be a transformed people? Can we be a people that God wants us to be, picking a leaf from the message that Amos delivered? Now, in chapter this, chapter one, verse one, you realize that Amos was a mere shepherd and a farmer. And so this is what I want to dwell on in the next few moments. A shepherd and a farmer, meaning actually he was doing some small business in Judah. He was never, the way we read about him, he was not in the house of priesthood. He was not in the line of the temple things. He was in the line of fields to looking after his animals and farming. Compared with his fellows, the prophets like Isaiah, remember the call of Isaiah? It came to him when he was in the temple. Jeremiah, do you remember the call of Jeremiah? Get back and see that actually, when you look at Isaiah, when you look at Jeremiah, when you look at Ezekiel and others, get back to these others like Hosea, where was he? Amos, whom we're talking about now, where was he? In the fields, he was a farmer. And so me as a shepherd and a farmer, J Amos comes, and when God calls him, he said the words of the Lord came to Amos, the shepherd of the core, which he saw concerning Israel in the days of, and when he's called, he dives into the message straight. And so he made you no know, excuses when he called, remember Isaiah, in the temple, but with excuses. Remember Jeremiah, a temple person, a priestly person, but with excuses. I'm too young. Isaiah says, no, 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 God. I'm too sinful. I can't go. Now, comparatively, Amos accepted to go and warn. He became a powerful voice among his people. And so ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, listening in, watching this, this is very, very important that God can use anybody. I have said this before I say it again. God can use anybody. God can use ordinary people in his own way. He calls them. He empowers them. He equips them and sends them. Praise the Lord. And so when he calls, he equips. When he equips, he sends. And when he sends, the message becomes a powerful tool there. So God uses ordinary people in the categories like we have seen in the Bible before. We have shepherds. Amos was a shepherd. How about Moses? You know, how about David? These were shep mere shepherd people. God uses them. Fishermen. Now, when you dive into the New Testament, you'll discover that actually most of them were ordinary people. Carpenters. Now, talk about the names. We have talked about Moses. We have talked about 
Joshua, we have talked about, how about Gideon? Where did God find him? Where did the angel find him? Hidden. And when they talk about threshing wheat, it is the arena of farming. And so God uses people. And I have prayed that God may use me, like use the ordinary people of that time. And can I be one of those that you can use ordinarily? And I do something that will benefit my hearers, will benefit my onlookers, will benefit the people that I am interacting with. So can you be the same? The people that you sit with, the people that you work with, the people that you interact with, be of impact. Amos was this. So whatever you are in life, whatever you are in life, God uses you. Whatever you are in life, God uses you and may he use you. So Amos' story, God can choose and God can use ordinary people, farmers, shepherds. And by the way, do you know what the, shep the shepherds go through? The kind of life that they go through. And during that time, it must have been so worse that actually at night, you have no door. You are the one who should be the door for your sheep. When you have built a hedge or a sheep pen, you, you must lie here. Well, the animals come, thieves come, rain is come, so whatever it is, you are, must be there. And so the life of a shepherd is not a pleasant one. The reason why Jesus says, I'm the door for the sheep, it means a lot. And when we get there, we shall dive into it more and more. And so a shepherd person is an ordinary person. A shepherd person is anybody with, you know, life, things that are so lowly. But God transforms ordinary into extraordinary. God transforms local into something that actually that can be of substantial uh, importance. So this is it. God does not need our ability, but God, what he desires is our availability. Not necessarily ability, because the one who gives the ability, the one who calls, the one who equips, and the one who sends. And so when he does this, he only needs you being available. And so I've always asked God, enable me to be available. And I also pray that may you be available to be usable of God. And someone ever said that the key to usability in the church, the key to usability in God's word is availability. And so this is important that actually you'll avail time like Amos did. And so it's only about faithfulness and one who's willingness to serve. Faithfulness and one willingness to serve. And so we are appealing to we are appealing to these two. Are you faithful? And are you willing? Can you offer your time? Amos did. And he, God, was, God used him to serve. And so when we base ourselves on this portion of scripture that he was a shepherd, he was a nobody, so to say, in the society, keeping in the fields. I just want us to pick some examples from the Bible. When you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26, 29, there's something that Apostle Paul does mention here. And Apostle Paul mentions something about the nobodies here. 1 Corinthians 1, 26, and about calling, because Amos, we're talking about his calling here. And so that for consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many of you were powerful. Not many of you were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world even things that are not to bring to nothing things that are. So that no human being might boast. Amen. So that no human being must, might boast in the presence of God. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and satisfaction and redemption so that it as it is written let the one who boasts boast in the lord 
Friends, to me, this is everything. Because we're talking about Prophet Amos, the man, a shepherd, a farmer, a business person, called, and his availability, his availability made him a prophet in the house of the prophets. Now, God chooses people, equips people, uses people, sends them to do his ministry. So consider the others. So that actually we don't boast. There's some people who go on boasting and doing things, but listen, remember where God found you. Those that actually God has found in your noble birth, those that God has found when you are up there, worship, praise God. But many people will give a testimony where God has found them and has gone on elevating them one by one. And one by one, elevating them up and up and up from grass to grace. Amos, the prophet here. Now consider Moses. Which kind of man was he? He became the deliverer. Consider David. Which kind of man was he? What kind of young person was he? He became the king. Consider Nehemiah. Which kind of person was he? A mere cupbearer before the king. He became a governor in Israel. Consider Esther. Esther Hadassah. A mere, that girl, there, 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 there. An exile refugee with her uncle or brother Mordecai. She became the queen. Consider Ruth, the widow, the widow with her mother-in-law, Naomi. Very important person. She became a grandmother in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Consider the fishermen in the New Testament. Now, the line can go on and on and on and on. Have I mentioned some names? Yes. Can they speak to us? People of not very up, very, very, very credible standing, but God chooses and God elevates. God chooses, God empowers, and God equips, and God sends. Can you be the one in our generation? Like Amos during his time, he took a very powerful message to the people. Amos, the prophet. Now, God uses the weak. God can use anyone, and God can use everyone. Worry not about your speaking abilities like Moses. God knows us in and out. Now, remember Jeremiah chapter 1 when he was called? His speaking abilities. I'm still young. He appealed to his age. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4, 5, 6. Go on. But God pronounced that I knew you before you were born. And this is where some of us derive our encouragement. When you read about them, we read about Moses, read about David, read about Joseph, read about Jeremiah, read about now, Amos, we said that actually we can also stand. We can also make our contribution during our time. We also read and say, yes, God can use us. God can elevate us. God, God can raise us. God can make us usable. Because the mere thing that you need to do is availability. And so I pray for you and I pray for myself here that like the Jeremiah's of this world, God can use you. So in 2 Corinthians, something that I want to wind up with, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and verses 5, and 5 to 6, there's something that actually this apostle again, Paul, mentions, 2 Corinthians 3, verses 5 to 6, this apostle still mentions something, and I will finish thereafter. And the Bible says, that not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us. But our sufficiency is from God. Our sufficiency is from God. Who has made us sufficient to be ministers of the new covenant? Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Friends, this is powerful. This is powerful. And in verse 4, he talks about such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. 
not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us, but our sufficiency is of God. Now, Prophet Amos delivers a message for me here, and may Prophet Amos deliver a message for you there, that in your trade, are you a business person? Are you a teacher? Are you a civil servant in whatever category? Are you whoever? God can also use you in your profession. Can I say it again? God can use you in your profession like he did. He used Amos, a shepherd. He used Amos, a farmer. He used Amos, you know, figs, dresser. He wanted a gardener, a gardener. Can you imagine? Now, God transforms people. May he transform you. So, this is important. God wants to use you. Now, the only answer that you must give is just like Isaiah made it after he had been, after he had been, you know, God had worked on him, after he had been called, after he had been washed, and then he made mention of something in Isaiah chapter, uh, chapter six. I mean, he says, here I am, send me. Can you get there? Here I am, send me. So the only thing is availability and the statement of availability like Isaiah, in chapter 6, when God called him, here I am, send me. And so there is a way God uses the unlikely people. And just like in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 13 to 14, Peter and John standing before the congregation and they were talking and people were ridiculing them, people were despising them. But one thing that they discovered in this chapter 4, verses 13 to 14, that these men were with Jesus Christ. So brethren, let not the world put you down. Let not your business put you down. Let not your work put you down. Let not your situation put you down. But allow God to use you. Avail yourself and God will use you mightily. He used the prophet Amos and we shall continue with the same. The way he used the prophet Amos, he can use you to bring transformation, to bring change in your society. And may God use you, may God use all of us to find a society that is pleasant to God and may God's name be praised in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we say, Amen and Amen.